All right, guys, are you ready? Sweet. Uh, going to talk today about a little bit of Git. Uh, so we're just going to go over kind of like a low level model overview as well as a command uh, Git reset and what that looks like within that model. So I like this quote from Steve Smith at Atlantean, uh, one of the guys I was watching and doing research for my presentation. That said that once you realize the Git internal model, you realize what commands must exist. Uh, and I found that to be especially true that as soon as I got a little more comfortable with how Git worked on like the base level, I was more confident in using a lot of the commands. So the uh, Git is comprised pretty much of three objects, uh, the base of which is the blob. Um, it has the, when you git add a file, git gives it a header, takes a SHA-1 hash, and compresses that file. Um, and then the next piece is going to be the tree. This is what we think of as a, uh, basically our directories, which point to or contain files. So the tree is going to just contain pointers or references to each of the blobs as well as the file names and then any other subdirectories within that tree. Uh, lastly, the commit is what captures all of this. So the commit always points to the root directory. Uh, it's, so it's only gonna have a pointer to one of the trees and then trees point to subtrees. Uh, and then the uh, commit of course has an author, committer, uh, the commit message as well as a hash of its own. And then they always have a reference to their previous commit parent, except in the case of the initial commit. So here's what that looks like as you continue to make more commits. Uh, so these are kind of snapshots in time as you make changes to your files and subdirectories. So I just kind of wanted to point out that as you're moving forward in your file progress, each uh, successive commit is pointing backwards in time to its commit parent. So this is how you're able to run stuff like uh, git reset or kind of move around uh, by referencing the heads of these different hashed commits. So I wanted to take you guys to uh, basically the terminal. Uh, I found this super interesting when I was watching some of the presentations. Um, I, ran, I did brew, use homebrew to install this tree command and this is a snapshot. So I pretty much just copied from my terminal and pasted it in here to save you guys from me mistyping to my terminal. <laughs> so this is a picture after I've uh, made a new directory and ran a git in it within that directory. So if I run this tree, uh, tree basically is a recursive ls through like all of the files and um, directories in the folder. So this is an empty, completely empty file. Uh, the info and pack files are always there by default. So uh, up on the left, this is right after I've actually added a file to this directory. So I, of course, I ran a touch index.js, and then I added it as a git tracker, or sorry, I have it added it to git's tracking. And then if I run that tree command again, you can see now there is one file listed in this directory, and that is the git blob. So that's just the base level uh, file for git. So after that, uh, our next stage, after we, let's say we made some changes to that file, uh, we're gonna run and we wanna commit it. So you run a git commit uh, on your first uh, initial commit. And then you can see now, this is a snapshot of that exact same folder uh, after the tree uh, git objects. And it, you can now see those three objects that we were looking at initially. So the blob is still down there at the bottom. And then above it is the tree and the commit. They're not always necessarily in that order. I think it depends on uh, the, how it orders the hashes, but all three of those objects are always gonna be in there if you run that, those same commands. So you guys could try this out in your own terminal. Uh, you'll just probably need to install that tree uh, command. So on the right here, I ran the cat file type of each, just so, because I really wanted to see the terminal output, like those exact words, the blob tree and commit. And sure enough, if you run it uh, with the reference to the first four, um, like letters and numbers in the hash, it'll tell you what each of those files is. And then uh, here at the bottom, I just wanted to check out the contents, right? So I wanted to actually dive in and see it show me the contents of a tree. So here, this is the pretty print contents of the tree, which is the second object uh, up here. And you can see it has the blob. It's got the reference to its head, as well as the hash and the file name. So I was pretty excited to see that in my terminal. <laughs> so uh, hopefully that gives you at least a decent grasp if you didn't have one already of the structure of Git. And now uh, let's take a look at a command. Specifically, I know I always wanted to know, how do I undo? all the time. 
but thanks to the Git file structure and the version control system, uh, it's no big deal. So depending on where you are uh, in your files, if you added them or committed them, uh, the commands are going to be a little bit different. But if you didn't mean to add, so like if you've staged a file, you want to git add and you have all these files staged, um, but you want to unstage them to make additional changes, if you just run git reset, it takes those files from staged to unstaged. So here's this little snapshot. You can see I've got a file there in green. I've added it. I want to make some changes to it. So if I run git reset and then git status again to check it, you can see that it's back there in red. Um, and then if you didn't want to save the changes, so you want to undo whatever, uh, you know, you want to take the file from red just to being untracked, um, but you don't necessarily know what you did in that file. I know I did this when we were like working in pairs. I was maybe messing around with something while my partner was working. Um, so I was trying to see if some code would work. And I don't remember what I did, which was often because I hit command save by default all the time. Uh, so if you run this git add dash p, it will actually show you what changes you made. So it's super helpful. It will actually output in these colors. The green um, is are going to be your changes. And then it will give you options to stage pieces of it or uh, all of it. And then if you hit the question mark uh, on that, it'll show you some other options you have for reviewing it. So if you do, in fact, want to get rid of those changes, usually I would only recommend this with something minor or if you like accidentally hit save and you want to undo it before you pull a merge. If you run a uh, git checkout uh, on that file name, it will actually untrack uh, and clear all of those changes you made to that file. So then if you run a git status, you'll see that you were back to a working clean directory. So now on to a little more, uh, undoing a little more of a permanent command being commit. So if you want to undo a commit that you made, like if you just made a, um, bad commit, or you want to make some changes to the file before you push, like if someone else on your group made the same change to the file that you did, you can run the git reset dash dash hard. And if you're on the master branch, uh, you reference master. If you're on a feature branch, I believe you uh, reference feature here with a little tick mark at the end. And that just is going to say, all right, I want you to take my file to just the previous commit. Um, so if you run this command, it'll output that your head is now at whatever commit you were on, you're now at its parent. So uh, actually what Nora was talking about with the garbage collection is kind of relevant in Git as well. So uh, you want to run a cleanup on objects, particularly if you're doing this once you get in, into like a bigger project uh, within a company and you've run several Git resets and you know that you're not going to want to get those objects anymore. Uh, you can run git gc dash dash prune and that will actually just get rid of any objects that no longer have pointers to them. Um, and it doesn't, it's actually really hard to totally delete something in Git. So even if you run this gc prune, it will still hold on to those objects that have been garbage collected for two weeks. So this is what it looks like before that gc prune. Um, and then this is what it looks like if you run that tree objects within that same file. So not only does it get rid of the objects without pointers, but it also compresses the remaining files and just makes for better space usage and optimization. So uh, git ref log is going to be super helpful if you are going to run any resets. Um, it shows you references to the different commit heads as well as the commit message. So that's why it is helpful to make meaningful commit messages. So you can see here, this is actually just what I went through when I had that index file in green, from green to red. So that's the bottom two lines. Um, I didn't actually have to undo a commit, so the head on the commit didn't really change. But you can see the action is tracked there. And then when I added that file and then ran the reset on it, you can see that it gave it a new header on that commit. And then when I ran the git reset, it took it right back down to that same head reference as my initial commit. So it's uh, actually super helpful for tracking your changes. Uh, so if you've gone through all this GC prune and you decide that you want to get back that commit that you now reset from, um, because it keeps all of these references uh, in the ref log, you can actually use that. So let's say I actually want to, so basically now my file is at head number three. That's like what the contents are at. If I run a git reset dash dash hard to the second, that head one, so that was the commit that I undid from, I just reference that, excuse me, just reference that instead of like the master feature branch, um, and it will actually just add, um, 
add that back on to basically the end of your kind of like a linked list. You can think of like that uh, commit line. Um, so it'll pop that node back on there as well as all the contents of the file. And if you run git ref log again, you'll see that your head zero is now going to be on the top of the stack. So uh, hopefully that was uh, at least a little bit informative for you guys. Um, definitely recommend checking it out. It, I, th I thought it was going to be boring. I was like, I should just do this so I'm like a more helpful uh, team member. But it was actually super interesting once I got um, a better handle on it. So hopefully uh, it was somewhat interesting for you guys and I appreciate your time.